and how far when it comes to india space journey how far has india come and especially when it comes to the contributions that has been done by isro take a look Now, the Indian Space Research Organization has had a very illustrious history since its formal establishment in the year 1969. It's done us proud on multiple occasions uh, through its various launches. So let's, in fact, give you uh, an insight into some of its very significant launches that have taken place with the onset of the new uh, millennium. And uh, let's, in fact, begin with... Uh, the year 2008, which was, of course, the year when Chandrayaan-1, our first ever lunar probe, which succeeded in its very first attempt, had actually been launched. Now, the reason why this mission was such a success was because towards the latter uh, part of its exploration, it managed to actually uh, discovered traces of water uh, on the lunar surface. So that has enormous implications. So that's the Chandrayaan-1 mission that we're talking about. Then, of course, let's fast forward five years later when uh, another very significant mission had been launched by ISRO. Again, a success in its very first attempt. Uh, the first a global mission which actually succeeded on its very first attempt to reach the orbit of the red planet. It's Mars that we're talking about. We're talking about mission Mangalya which in fact achieved fruition in the year 2013. After Mangalyaan, of course, there was another mission uh, that we actually managed to launch uh, very successfully, and that was the establishment of the first space astronomy observatory on the part of India. It was called the AstroSat, and one of the unique features of this particular mission was, of course, that uh, the observatory had a capability of carrying out broadband, simultaneous, multi-wavelength observation going from the ultra ultraviolet to the gamma ray. So that is what set this particular mission apart. Then, of course, we go to 2018, where we launched the military communication satellite for the Indian Air Force, which actually served the purpose of connecting all our air assets for monitoring through the means of a satellite that we've launched in space. Then, in fact, uh, we'll go to 2019, where we talk about Chandrayaan-2. Now, some people believe that Chandrayaan-2 actually failed. However, uh, there are mixed views about this for the simple reason that while the Vikram lander in that particular instance crash landed on the lunar surface, the orbiter still managed to do its job in sending some extremely valuable research insights over an extended period of time. Now, 2023 is when we launched Chandrayaan-3, and this marked an improvisation from Chandrayaan-2, and this mission did ultimately succeed because the soft landing of the Vikram lander on the lunar surface was successfully achieved. Not just that, the Pragyan rover emerged out of the Vikram lander onto the lunar surface and as we speak is providing us with some extremely significant and valuable data which has serious implications for lunar exploration uh, in the uh, years to come. In fact, this mission was also a success because it was the very first attempt by any country to, to land on the moon South Pole. So that's Chandrayaan-3 that we're talking about. And this is all happening in the build-up to the launch of Aditya L1, our first ever solar probe where we land on the Lagrange, or in fact we'll orbit around, I beg your pardon, the Lagrange point from where we'll be able to get an uninhibited view of the sun for solar exploration. So this is in fact um, a summation of all the important space exercises that that we've carried on since 2008, all of which have been successes in their own way. And now, of course, we wait with bated breath for the launch of Aditya L1.